Good morning, saints, and God bless you. Welcome to Spirit of New Ministries. I'm Pastor Charles Young. So good to have you with me this morning. We are here to celebrate the goodness and the majesty of our God, for he is great and greatly to be praised. As we begin our worship this morning, join me in going to the 117th Psalm, Psalm 117, and there we will see the first two verses of that 117th Psalm, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. There it declares, O oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. And that's why we're here this morning, to praise the Lord, because his truth does endure forever. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come this morning with hearts aglow and with our spirits uplifted. Lord, we thank you for this glorious day that you've given us. Thank you for another opportunity to lift up your name and to celebrate you in all of your majesty. We pray that your spirit would rest with us, allow us to worship you in ways that honor you. And then, Lord, we pray that you would speak to our hearts through the word this morning. Help us to hear your voice and apply your truth to our living. For that, Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you. And it's this prayer that we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, saints, so good to have you with me this morning. We're celebrating the goodness and the mercy, the grace and the grandeur of our Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. We are now in the month of December, and we are so thankful that as we're now on the first Sunday of the last month of the year, that God is still keeping us, still blessing us each and every day. Now, as we are approaching the Christmas season, we pray that you would continue to exercise safety by wearing your mask, by social distancing, and by disinfecting and doing all what's necessary to stay healthy during this holiday season. As we're approaching Christmas, we are getting ready to engage on a Christmas basket uh, campaign. We're going to be providing food baskets. Uh, we did this on Thanksgiving, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Here at Spirit Anew, we were able to provide food baskets uh, to people in the community, and we're going to engage upon that effort again. It's going to be held here at Spirit of New Ministries on Saturday, December the 19th, and we will be providing those food baskets again. So we're going to ask if you can and if you will to help us support that effort. Uh, if you could share in your giving in order for us to provide the kind of necessary items, the food items, uh, for those th Christmas baskets on December the 19th. Again, it's good to give to God because he continues to bless us each and every day. The Bible says we ought to bring our tithes to the storehouse, that there would be meat in mine house herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. We give to God because truly he continues to give to us, and we want to be a blessing to the Lord, to the church, and to the people. And we do this on a consistent basis. Know that you can give the Spirit of New Ministries three different ways. You can give by downloading the Givelify app to your device and then following the prompts for your giving. You can also go to the Givelify uh, website at givelify.com. Look for Spirit of New Ministries and then follow the apps for your giving. And then thirdly, you can go to spiritofnewministries.com, our website, and you can follow the giving there by going to the donations tab, and that will take you to the green Givelify tab. And again, you can follow the prompts for your giving. We thank you so much for your gifts. We pray that all that you're that you're able to give would be, we're going to use it for kingdom purpose. Uh, we do this every single week as Spirit of New Ministries. We want to be a blessing to the community, and we're going to continue to do so. So we pray that God would continue to bless you in your giving. Let's look to the Lord right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time of worship, and we thank you for the opportunity to give in order that we may be a blessing to others. Lord, we know that that's your purpose, that's your goal for us, to be able to be a blessing to those who are in need. So we pray now your blessings over the gifts, over the tithes, the offerings, the sacrificial giving. We pray for those who uh, are rendering those gifts, and we ask that you would open heaven's window and bless them abundantly. And for that, Lord, we offer to you our thanks. It's this prayer that we now ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Again, saints, it's time now for us to go to the Word of God, and I would ask that you would join me in going to the book of Colossians, Paul's letter to that church. And in Colossians, if you would join me in going to the second chapter, Colossians chapter 2, and there we're going to look at two very powerful verses, verses 6 and 7. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And I will be reading this morning from the New International Version. And beginning at verse 6, it says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thanks, thankfulness, and overflowing with thankfulness. And this morning, I'd like to encourage your hearts from the thought, living victoriously, living victoriously. You know, for many, as we are now approaching the end of this year, that objective of living victoriously may seem to be unrealistic. It may seem to be unobtainable. Uh, it just may seem to be a very difficult thing to do because in light of the circumstances with the COVID, 19 pandemic with unemployment and with all that's going on, people are just trying to do the best they can just to survive, let alone live victoriously. And that's understandable. I mean, that, that's a real situation right now because 2020 has been and still is a very difficult and very challenging year for so many, many people. And how I look at this as the fact that this is a year like we've never seen before, and truly, I pray we never see again. But there is one thing that I have learned, and it was a very important lesson that I learned many years ago. And it is pretty much been proven true. It pretty much rings true. I've seen it to pretty much come to pass, and that is that for the most part, People live their lives based upon their outlook and more specifically upon their particular worldview. How people see or perceive their environment, their world in many cases, will typically be determined their attitudes, it will determine their thoughts, and it will determine their actions. The attitudes they adopt, the thoughts they have, and the actions they take. Now, for a moment, I need to preface the next statement that I'm getting ready to make because uh, this statement is not meant to be politicized or to be an incendiary statement. But for all practical purpose, what I'm getting ready to say is true. And for instance, if you take this COVID-19 pandemic that we've been dealing with for the past nine or 10 months, Many who have adopted or have taken the worldview or the outlook that this disease wasn't serious, it's not a big deal, have pretty much responded accordingly by not wearing masks, not social distancing, and not adhering to the safety warnings. Many who adopted the outlook or who have taken the worldview that this disease is serious, that it is a big deal, have pretty much governed themselves accordingly by wearing masks, by social distancing, and by adhering to the safety warnings. And so what we have here are two different perspectives that's yielded two different responses. How we live life is often determined by or predicated on how we see life. Again, attitudes, thoughts, and actions are typically based upon circumstances and how those circumstances are viewed. In all reality, it's just a part of the human condition. It's the way we're built. 
We're very sensory oriented and emotionally responsive. And this really goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And that's what caused the fall of humanity that's really gotten us to where we are right now. So therefore, it's so very, very vital to give great thought, prayer, and consideration to and contemplation of before launching out on a course of action based upon circumstances. And even Scripture tells us that we ought to be careful regarding the assessment of our circumstances and therefore govern ourselves accordingly. For instance, when you look at Luke chapter 14 and you look at verses 28 through 30, and from the New or, or from the English Standard Version, there it says, For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build but was not able to finish. So in spite of the fact that we're facing challenging, chaotic, and disturbing times, and these are times like we've never, ever seen before, it is still God's purpose, His plan, and His desire for all of us, in spite of our circumstances, to live victoriously. But unfortunately, right now, so many people are existing under the weight of disillusionment, frustration, confusion, bitterness, anger, and even rage. And for so many, it's extremely difficult, if not next to impossible, to even envision living victoriously and to see what that really looks like. Such was the case for the Christians living in the Phrygian city of Colossae. That's why the Apostle Paul so passionately and eloquently encouraged the saints there to live victoriously in the midst of the trying times that they were encountering. And parenthetically, everyone can use a word of encouragement every now and again, and I believe that's why Paul told the saints living in Rome, in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, he said, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So now, without fanfare, without pretense, he succinctly establishes the doctrinal and practical application premise for his case. Look at what he says. Going back to Colossians, that second chapter, and looking at the first five verses, look at what he says in verse 1. He says, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding for the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. He says in verse 3, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments for though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Paul here was struggling in his spirit because of his love for the saints in the city of Colossae and in Laodicea. He loved them. He wanted to be there with them. He wanted to desperately get to each of these locations in person during his missionary journeys so he could minister to and encourage the hearts of the saints. But unfortunately, because of the persecutions that he was under, he was not able to make it there. So he was not able to see them face to face. And with that reality, Paul really struggled. He wanted to be there. 
He wanted them to live victoriously. He knew that the only way that that was going to happen was that there were some things that they needed to do. For them to live victoriously, Paul knew that they needed to have their hearts encouraged. Just like today, we need to have our hearts encouraged. In spite of what's going on around us, we need to have our hearts encouraged. He also knew that they needed to be unified or knitted together in love. And there's nothing like being on one accord with God. Nothing like being on one accord, being knit together, being unified by the power of Jesus Christ. They also needed to have full assurance and understanding of Christ. They needed to do this and realize that it's in him where all of the treasures of their wisdom and understanding lie. Finally, they also needed to have their lives in good order. And beloved, it's so very important that we have our lives in good order and he also wanted them to have their souls firmly rooted in their faith in Christ. And this good order means godly order. It means spiritual order. It leaves living right, seeking right, and thinking right. Doing the right thing for the right reason at the right time and doing it consistently. And that's why when you get to our verse for this morning, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, there he says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. So in essence, what he's saying, just as you initially trusted Christ Jesus as Lord, as you initially embraced Christ Jesus as Lord, and as you initially received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. And so now when we kind of break this passage down and we look at this word continue, continue is a verb, it's a Greek word, and it is the word preparateo, preparateo. And preparateo means to walk, to make one's way, to progress, to make due use of opportunities to conduct oneself, to regulate one's life. So we're talking about a progressive process, something that is an ongoing process to walk, to make sure that your way is right, to make sure that you're making progress, to make due use of the opportunities that are presented, to conduct ourselves and to regulate our lives in a particular way based upon, predicated upon God's word. Now, as you look at this sixth verse, look at what it doesn't say. Paul does not say, only continue to live your lives in him based upon your circumstances. He does not say, only if things are going your way. Only if you, your family, friends, or loved ones are healthy and have not contracted the COVID virus. Only if you are still employed and earning an income. Only if if you haven't lost a loved one this year, only if your candidate won the election. Only if justice has been obtained for George, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Rashawn Brooks, and countless others whose precious lives were taken away from us violently. He doesn't say only if these things happen. He doesn't say only if you and yours are doing well right now. And I say right now because in a matter of minutes, things can change drastically. He does not say only if these things are happening. What he does say is to continue to live your lives in him in spite of what's going on, not because of what's going on, in spite of how you feel, in spite of what's going on in your life. In spite of the circumstances that are surrounding you, in spite of the fact if you or someone that you love has COVID-19, even if you've lost a loved one, even if your candidate did lose the, ele the election, even if you are unemployed, even if justice hasn't come or doesn't look like it's going to come quickly, or even if things are not going the way that you need or want them to go, Paul says to continuously live your lives in Christ, not because of, but in spite of what's going on. And he says this ought to be a daily process. Unfortunately, so many of us 
will continue only if things are going the way we want or we need them to go. Only if things are working out the way that we plan for them to work out. But that's not what the scripture says. That's not what Paul is saying. And I believe for the same reason, that's why Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, he said, but seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What are all these things? All of the necessities of life, all of the things that are necessary for us to be able to live life. What Jesus was saying, if you follow the things of the spirit, the things of the natural will then flow to you. And this is what I'm talking about when I mention good order. I spoke about that a few moments ago, this, this good order, making sure that we're living our lives based upon, contingent upon, foundationed upon the very things of Christ. And so now when you go to verse 7, verse 7 says, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. And again, let's take a closer look at this seventh verse here, this rooted up. Rooted up means, or rooted means, it's the word rizoo. Rizoo, again, is a group, a Greek word, it's a verb, and it means to render firm or to fix or establish, to cause a person or a thing to be thoroughly grounded. In essence, making a firm foundation. And then also in that seventh verse is the phrase built up. And built up, again, is a Greek word. It's a verb. It is the word apoikodameo. Apoikodameo. And apoikodameo means to build upon, to build up, to finish the structure of which the foundation has already been laid to give constant increase in Christian knowledge and in a life that's conformed thereto. So now, let's talk about what this is. I need to make sure that my rizio, my rizoo, is built firm, is established strongly so that my Apocadomeo, that which I build upon, is now solid, is able to be built in a way that honestly, earnestly, sincerely, and firmly acknowledges the very power of the God that we serve. So my life needs to be built on a strong foundation. My life needs to be built on a firm foundation. And in doing so, what God does is he allows us to be able to live our lives victoriously. And that's not by accident. And I know that because when you go to Matthew chapter 7, our Lord Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount discourse speaks very specifically about this. Matthew chapter 7, when you look at verses 24 through 27 in the King James, it says this. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. See, it's not enough just to hear. That's why the scripture says, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers also. He says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. Why? Why? For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone who hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not. Here's the contrast here. Who doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. Which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew. And beat upon that house and it fell. And notice what. The end of this says, and great was the fall of it. You see, we have to have our lives built on the solid and sure Rizzo foundation of Christ. Because the floods of lights are going to come, the rains are going to come, the winds are going to blow, and we're going to find ourselves dealing with adverse circumstances. We're not going to be able to avoid it. We can't sidestep it. We can't opt out of it. 
These are the things in life that are going to happen. We need to build on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. There and only there are we going to be able to build our house of faith that will withstand the adverse times that we are going to face. Look at what Paul says when you go to Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 4 through 9, there and verse 13 there it says, beginning at verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be, known, be made known unto God. And the peace of God. See, I don't know about you, but I want to have that peace of God. I don't care if it's COVID-19. I don't care if it's whatever's going on politically. I don't care what's ever going on economically. Lord, if I have nothing else, let me have that peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, he says, finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Remember I said early in the sermon, the thoughts are actions and the way we perceive our world or our worldview will determine how we act. We need to learn how to think on the things of Christ so that we are putting ourselves in the position to be able to live lives victoriously. And then notice what he says in verse 13. Or no, in verse 9, he says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and see in me... Do, and the God of peace will be with you. He goes on and he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So now, when, when you quickly summarize all of this, what we think about matters. And whose example we follow matters. Here, Paul says, these are the things that we need to focus our attention on. These are the things we need to think about. Do you know what, if I thought about this COVID virus and it just really allowed myself to just think about it so much that it would bother me, yeah, I'm troubled by it, but I realize it is what it is, but I also realize there are some things I need to do. I need to make sure I'm wearing a mask. I need to make sure that I'm social distancing. I need to make sure that I'm not putting myself in a precarious position by being around a whole bunch of folk in a closed area. There are things I need to do, so I'm not going to think about the things that I may just want to do just because I'm uncomfortable, but I'm going to think about the things that I know I need to do, the things that are wise, the things that, are, are, uh, that, that will help me to be safe in the midst of what I'm dealing with. And then I also need to think about the things that the Lord continues to bless me with. Every day, he's blessing me with, with good health. He's blessing me with life. He's blessing me with the opportunity to speak to all of you good people about his word and how his word can bless our lives on a daily basis. And then I need to follow good example. Paul says, the things that you have seen and have heard in me do, and the peace of God will be with you, and the peace of God will strengthen you. And so here, not only do I need to think about the right things, but I also need to follow the godly example that's provided for me in his word. What we think about and who we follow as our example makes a big difference. So, beloved, in order to live victoriously, I need to make sure that, that I'm perceiving Christ, I'm receiving him, and I'm continuing to live in him and allowing myself to be rooted and built up in him. I need to strengthen my faith. I need to make sure that the things that I've been taught in Jesus Christ, that I'm living it out on a daily basis. And I need to make sure that I have a heart that is overflowing with thanksgiving. And that's what it takes to live a victorious life. And that's what a victorious life looks like. 
having my heart encouraged, having myself being unified and knitted together in love, making sure that I have full assurance and understanding of Christ and realizing that it is in him through whom all of the treasures of my life of wisdom and understanding are foundation. And then finally, I need to make sure that I'm having my life in good order, making sure that my soul is firmly rooted in Christ and in Christ alone. You see, when I do that, then I can have my attitudes, my thoughts, and my actions being based and foundation upon the things of Christ and not in circumstances. And what that does is it gives me the peace that passeth all understanding. And along the way, I need to make sure that my heart is thankful. The scripture tells us, Paul told the, Th the Thessalonians, he said, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so not only do I need to stay rooted and foundationed in Christ, but I also need to walk with a heart of thanksgiving. If I do this based not upon perception, not upon circumstances, but upon the very foundation of God's word, then, beloved, we can live lives victoriously because that's God's heart's desire, that's his purpose and his plan for each and every one of us. And the only way that I can live a victorious life is I have to have my life foundationed on the sure foundation of Christ Jesus. And if you're here today and if you want to do that, then please let this be the opportunity that you would receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Today is that day. You don't have to wait until next week or another time in the future, but right now, today, is that opportunity for you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And all you have to do is to trust him that he is the Son of God, that he died on the cross at Calvary for your sins. He shed his precious blood for you and me. And when he went into the grave, he rose on the third day with all power in his hands that we might have life and have it more abundant. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then please just repeat these words after me. Heavenly Father, I know that I've sinned, and I now ask for your forgiveness. I'm ready to turn away from my sins and receive your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that he is your son, that he is the savior of the world, that he died on the cross for my sins, was resurrected from the dead, and now lives at your right hand. Lord, I invite you to come into my life right now, and I pray for your Holy Spirit to empower me to live a life pleasing before you. For these things, oh God, I thank you, I praise you, and I love you. This prayer I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, if you prayed that prayer in faith, if you trusted Jesus Christ for your Lord and Savior, then right now today, you are a Christian. You have salvation. You have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I'm so excited. For you today. I would love to help you in your faith journey. Please feel free to give me a call here at Spirit of New Ministries. I'll be glad to talk with you, to pray with you, help you along your journey as you grow in your faith in Christ. You'll see the information coming up on the screen where you can contact me, and I look forward to receiving your call. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that this word has been a help to you and that your soul was revived and your spirit uplifted. Remember to join me again on Wednesday as we have our Bible study on Facebook and on YouTube. Again, remember to join me right back here next Sunday morning at 1015 here at Spirit of New Ministries. As we close our worship, now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us both henceforth now and forevermore and all the children of God said amen amen and God bless you look forward to seeing you again next Sunday right here at Spirit Anew Ministries